Today's New Testament reading is the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. And they led Jesus to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. And Peter had followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. And he was sitting with the guards and warming himself at the fire. Now the chief priests and the whole council were seeking testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. And some stood up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. Yet even about this their testimony did not agree. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But he remained silent and made no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. And the high priest tore his garments and said, What further witnesses do we need? You have heard his blasphemy. What is your decision? And they all condemned him as deserving death. And some began to spit on him and to cover his face and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy. And the guards received him with blows. And as Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the servant girls of the high priest came. And seeing Peter warming himself, she looked at him and said, You also were with the Nazarene Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you mean. And he went out into the gateway, and the rooster crowed. And the servant girl saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. But again he denied it. And after a little while the bystanders again said to Peter, Certainly you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. But he began to invoke a curse on himself and to swear, I do not know this man of whom you speak. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. And Peter remembered how Jesus had said to him, Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. And he broke down and wept. This is the word of the Lord. For today's meditation on God's word, we welcome Pastor Andrew Yeager. In the name of Jesus, amen. Dear saints of God, with the last days of Lent upon us and Holy Week before us, we turn our attention toward the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ. We meditate upon Christ our Lord, who, by the shedding of his precious blood, atoned for our sin and won our redemption, that we might be justified before God and saved. And so we have for our meditation today two events within the passion of our Lord, which are, number one, Jesus on trial before the high priest, and number two, the denial of Peter. Now first, the trial of Jesus. The high priest puts Jesus on the witness stand, as it were, and asks him if he is the Christ, the Son of God, the Blessed One. At first, Jesus remains silent, and that fulfills the prophecy we have of him in Isaiah 53, like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, he opened not his mouth. But finally, Jesus answers the high priest's question fully and directly. I am, he says, ego eimi in the Greek. Jesus takes the divine name of God upon himself, for he is truly the divine Son of God in human flesh. And though he stands before them now, clothed in humility and weakness, Jesus recalls the words of Daniel 7, the vision of the Son of Man, who is seated at the right hand of the Ancient of Days, coming on the clouds of heaven to judge the earth. And Jesus says, that's me. I am the Son of Man. Now notice first how Jesus makes the good confession before God and all the world. He's not afraid to speak of his person and work, even though he will be charged with blasphemy and sentenced to death for it, because Jesus trusts his Father in heaven. He believes that God will deliver him, 
And by calling himself the Son of Man, Jesus is intentionally telling his persecutors something very interesting about who he is. He's telling them that he, not they, he is the true judge of heaven and earth. That on the last day the tables will be turned and all the world will be standing before him at the judgment to give an account of their lives. But Jesus is in the dock here as the accused, as the condemned, as the one sentenced to die for no sin of his own. He's the judge of the world and yet he's being judged by the world. He's an innocent man, and yet he is declared guilty of sin that he never committed. And why? Because Jesus is our stand-in, our substitute. He is the one who is charged with our crime and punished for our sin, so that in the court of God, we might be acquitted, forgiven, and set free. So see the contrast, then, between the confession of Jesus and the denial of Peter. Peter told our Lord, verse 29, that he would never deny him, that he would follow our Lord even unto death. But Peter's heart is like the heart of every human being. It's flighty. One minute Peter has a heart full of pride and arrogant defiance. The next minute his heart is full of cowardice. Peter denies our Lord first to a servant girl and then to some bystanders to save his own skin. And then when the rooster crows and the Lord looks at Peter, Peter remembers the Lord's word, the prediction of his denial, and he breaks down and weeps. Now the theologian Johann Gerhard says, the reason that the evangelists record this event in such great detail is that from the example of Peter's fall into sin, we may come to acknowledge two things. Number one, the weakness of our corrupt to the core nature And number two, that we may learn from his reclamation, that is, from the Lord's reclaiming him and forgiving him, to acknowledge God's immeasurable compassion and mercy. What that means is that when we see Peter, we see ourselves. We see all the ways that we too have denied the Lord through our works and life. We're given to see that so that we might learn not to depend on ourselves on our own strength and ability to be faithful to God through our own work and effort and striving, and so that we might learn to lean on God's forgiveness. Jesus forgave Peter when he said to Peter and all the apostles in the upper room, Peace be with you. And he forgave him again when he restored him to the office of pastor and apostle by his threefold command, Feed my sheep. And therefore, we can trust and believe in God's mercy. For every time we fall, deny, or turn our backs to God, that he will always receive us again as his beloved sons and daughters, for the sake of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.